Fulham have officially sold Jao Polinia to Bayern Munich. And this now has me nervous. Polinia was one of the greatest talents I have ever seen don the Fulham kit. And now we have a massive challenge to fill the void that he leaves. When it comes to Fulham, I love this club, but I am forever a pessimist. I am now deathly fearing relegation. I've seen too many relegation campaigns supporting Fulham. Today, I aim to put some of my fears to bed. I'm taking over Fulham, not only trying to survive the Premier League this year, but trying to make Fulham eventually European champion. Champions. So here is the updated Fulham roster up to this date. It is currently the 17th of July when I'm recording. So there may be some other players that transfer in the next couple weeks or months. But I've got rid of all the players that have left this offseason. Jao Polinia to Bayern Munich. Tolson to Chelsea. Absolutely disgraceful. And the great Bobby Decadover Reed to Leicester City. Along with releasing Rodak, Tyrese Francois, and a whole bunch of other players that are now free agents. But I have added the Zhao Polinia money to our transfer budget. We need to use it wisely. There are so many gaps to fill in this Fulham squad. Let's get started. Oh, I've also elected to keep Marco Silva as the manager for this video. I have a lot of faith in Marco Silva. And I mean, after dealing with Scott Parker for so many years, Marco Silva is a saint. In Marco, we trust. Let's go help Marco win Fulham a Champions League title. I don't want to label this a realistic rebuild because there are some transfers that I'm sure I'll make that won't be counted as realistic. But this signing here would fall under that category. Emil Smith-Rowe has been linked with Fulham for what has felt like the past six to nine months. We're going to bring him in. He helps fill a massive void and we're going to help reignite the young winger's career. And just under half of Jao Polinia's transfer money has been invested into his replacement we're going back to the Portuguese league. We signed Jal Polinia from the Portuguese league and now we're signing him replay his replacement, Alan Vareia, the Argentinian defensive midfielder signing on from FC Porto. I'm hoping with the signings we make this year, we can look back on it and say, yep, we invested that money perfectly. First man out of the club though on a permanent transfer. We've brought him back from loan and now we're selling Kevin Mbabu to Napoli for seven mil. The American and one of, he's been so good at Fulham for so many years. I would normally keep him but Tim Ream is rumored with a move to the MLS in real life with Charlotte FC so I think it makes sense for us to sell him here. I was hoping to get an offer in from the MLS but instead he continues his European journey on the French coast. So many players we need to loan out. You're, we're about to maybe break a record for the most loans. First one is the New Zealand midfielder Matt Dibley Diaz heading out to Spain for two years. Jay Stansfield the wonder kid himself heading to Empoli. I would actually not be opposed to Stansfield getting a run as the starting striker next year. Unfortunately, though, in EAFC, his overall has not caught up to his abilities. He was unbelievable in a relegated Birmingham City side in the championship. And I mean, as a Fulham fan, I've heard about this kid coming up for the past, like for so many years now, it feels like half a decade. I'm ready to see what he has. But in this alternate reality, we are going to make a massive, massive signing at striker. It is Adamola Lookman, a former Fulham player. Again, I don't know how we got relegated with this guy. This guy was a victim of Scott Parker Ball. He was in our relegated Fulham side a few years ago and then last year absolutely killed it for Atalanta scoring goals in the Europa League final. His value goes down a little bit but it's okay. I want to see if Adamola Lookman can get a second chance at the cottage and become an insane striker for us. 32 mil for him. Deep down, I'm still hurting that we've lost Mitrovic and I'm worried that might be a problem area for us in real life. I would love though. I mean, we saw how good Rodrigo Munez was in real life in the second half of last year. I pray that he can carry that across the entirety of the season, but I don't know, man. I don't have full faith. And of course in FIFA, he's only 72 overall. So that's a massive risk. Feeling much better about 81 rated Lookman. Kieran Bowie, the latest player to head out on loan. And Willian is another player that we are hearing massive rumblings about walking away from Fulham this off season. So I'm going to pull the trigger on that one as well. Willian heading to Nottingham Forest. Luke Harris, another one to kid of Fulham's heading to Norwich on loan. Martial Godo heading down to Coventry. The young Colombian right back, Devin Tanton heading to Beijing. 
And perhaps our final loan move of this opening season. It's for 16-year-old Joshua King, who's heading to the Netherlands for the next two years. Carlos Vinicius is on his way to link up with Mitro. He's going to sign at Al Halal for four and a half million pounds. And that is how we're going to run our opening transfer window in charge of Fulham. Still a lot of money in our budget, about 40, 50 million pounds still to work with. So my big question mark is around the defense. I mean, Fulham do need defensive help in real life. So maybe a new right back, maybe a new centre back. We'll see. I, I know Harrison Reed isn't up there in overall, but I rate Harrison Reed so, so highly. So I'm willing to give him the start this year. We'll see how we go though. Let's check in and see if we're in the relegation battle on the 1st of January. Although seeing this is a great start, manager of the month to open up the season. Okay, so we find ourselves right now on the 1st of January, sitting in 13th, which isn't terrible. That is something I'd be very happy with, but we are only seven points clear of the relegation zone. We need to get out in the market again here in January and make sure that we are we are keeping ourselves up in the Premier League. We're scoring an all right. I mean, we're, we're scoring goals. We're conceding goals. There's no major crisis in any area. So I think I'm going to go for what's going to help us best long term. Kenny Tete has requested a transfer and that is exactly what we're going to grant him. The Dutch right back signing up with Napoli. It doesn't make sense to me why Napoli have signed him when they also signed Mbabu, but I'm happy to take their money. A below market price here to get ourselves a new right back. We sign Aaron Juan Basaka. He's desperate to get out of Old Trafford and get some more game time. Stuck behind Diogo Delot. So we're going to bring him here to the cottage. 21.4 million pounds. He's familiar with London football, mostly South London football, but let's make him familiar with West London. Another Englishman joining the fold here. Trevor Chalobah, just like Smith Rowe, has been linked with a move to Fulham for a hot minute now. So we're going to move on that, getting the six foot four defender from Chelsea, 13.9 million pounds. Going to pocket the 15 million pounds we still have, put it towards getting better coaches and transfers next season. But let's see if we've done enough to keep the mighty Fulham football club in the Premier League. Oh my, we have had a terrific second half of the season. We end up moving to eighth position, which I don't think is enough to get us Conference League, but I am stoked with that. Fulham, anytime Fulham could get a top half of the table finish, I'm over the moon. 58 points, three points behind Aston Villa, the Premier League champions this year, Liverpool winning it comfortably. And in the relegation zone, it is going to be Southampton. Damn, it is a bad time to be a, a football club on the South Coast. All three Southern teams going down Ipswich surviving by one point. Man City do win the FA Cup. Peterborough making it to the semi-finals. Fair play. We did make it to the round of 16 where we went out to Aston Villa. Man City also winning the Carabao Cup. Second round exit for us there though. That's embarrassing. Barcelona win the Champions League. Benfica, the Europa. And Fenerbahce winning the Conference League. The Mourinho era begins strongly. The lads sharing the wealth, but Emil Smith-Rowe, the golden boot winner here. 21 goal contributions. Andreas Pereira, the man whose name is on the back of the jersey I'm wearing, bagging himself 12 goals. And then, all right, first season there at striker from Lookman, 12 goals for him. A few players I really want to check in on their growth. Luke Harris, plus three. Jay Stansfield up to a 70. I'm not sure if we're going to get to use him as a starter in this video, but I would love to make him a backup. And the Kiwi, Dibley Diaz, up into the 60s. But that is a terrific first season here with Fulham. Let's build on it and push for some sort of European football in season number two. Boom, what a way to start season number two. We get ourselves a partner for Varela in the midfield. It is Morten Hilmund, the Dane, joining us here. Another player coming across from the Portuguese league. I'm not doing this on purpose, lads. It just works out. But we pay 34 million pounds for this guy. Looks like an absolute anchor in the defensive midfield role. So we make a signing and then we sell a player. Adama Traor wanted out of the club. We're going to let him do that. Five million pounds to Forrest. I was debating converting Sasha Lukic into a position where he would get more game time, but uh, I saw the 10 million pounds come in from Atalanta and I decided to accept it. The Serbian midfielder heading to Atalanta for 10 mil. The young Swiss midfielder Christian Sekulurak heading to St. Pauli for two years. And it is time for us to make a massive move in the defense. Issa Diop, Issa heading to Juventus. Another year, another loan move for Luke Harris. I do feel like we're starting to become best friends with Al-Halal. 
Alex Awobi. No. Oh my god, it broke down. He went to Brighton instead. I'd accepted it for Al Halal. Brighton, that went through. That was quick. I accepted that one day ago. Meanwhile, the Al Halal one was accepted a week ago. So I just assumed, but never mind. We are not best friends with Al Halal anymore. Fulham does have a great history with signing Americans, however. And we are going to add another one here to the fold. Gio Reyna, out of favorite Borussia Dortmund, came back from his loan spell at Nottingham Forest and now makes the permanent move. The latest American at the cottage. We paid 25 and a half mil for him. Jay Stansfield heading down to the championship for the year. And Rodrigo Munez, I mean, Jimenez is retiring at the end of the year, so I've decided to loan him out, get him some game time, keep him happy. Rodri Goat heading to Galatasaray. Our defensive upgrade has been bagged, ladies and gentlemen. It is Ezri Konsa. 82 overall, 26 years of age, entering the prime of his career. We're going to get the Englishman from Aston Villa. And I mean, technically, our whole back line is a, uh, English now. I know it says Anthony Robinson is American. I know he plays for the American national team. But the man was born in England. He has the thickest English accent. The dude is about as American as I am. Now, that is a good looking football side, ladies and gentlemen. Extremely balanced. I I am so excited to see what we can do with this Fulham side this year. I'm hoping that relegation is out of the picture, but when it comes to Fulham, you never know. But personally, my goal is to get this team into European football of some sort, whether it's Conference League, Europa League, or Daring to Dream Champions League. This is all I want. But one thing I also want is for you to subscribe down below if you are new around here. If you enjoy the content, go ahead, Scorpion kick that subscribe button, help us out. All right, eighth in the Premier League right now. We have a game in hand over some clubs ahead of us, not too many of them, but we're in a really strong position, 28 points. The losses are killing us, man. The losses are killing us. Our defense has been very strong. 25 goals against, 28 goals scored. I'm excited for what the second half of this season has to offer. But with Brighton getting relegated last year, we're going to use that to our advantage, signing one of their best young prospects. Valentin Barco, the Argentinian left back, joins us for just 11.5 million pounds. He could definitely be a great succession plan for Anthony Robinson down the line. So I'm going to throw him up on the low list and see if we can get any moves for him here in January. Just a short one. That is a huge blow though. The day after Adamol Lukman breaks his metatarsal, he's going to be out for seven weeks. I could give Jimenez or Kieran Bowie the starting role, but I think it's going to be best for us. We don't want to drop points here. I'm going to bring Rodrigo Munez back from the loan spell at Galatasaray. He goes up and overall when we do so, and hopefully he can be a huge difference maker. This is your opportunity, son. This is the type of loan move we're getting in here for Barco. Man United want him for two years. I do not want to send him there. I was more thinking maybe he could go back to Brighton for the rest of the year, not go up to Man United. All right, we get a we get a somewhat suitable loan move for him. Valentin Barco heading to West Ham United for six months. And there it is. We stay stagnant in the second half of the season and we end up finishing exactly where we finished last year and where we were halfway through this year. We finish eight. We're the modern day Arsenal. Where Arsenal used to finish fourth every year, we now finish eighth every year. Speaking of Arsenal, they finish third. Meanwhile, Man City are one loss away from going invincible. Down the table, who got relegated? It is Leicester, Norwich, and Ipswich. The FA Cup goes to Arsenal. And Nottingham Forest win the Carabao Cup. We actually lost to Forest in the semi finals 4 1 on aggregate. Real Madrid win the Champions League. Fenerbahce are on a bit of a climb. They win the Conference League. They win the Europa League. I'm putting my life savings on them winning the Champions League next season. And Real Betis finish the year as Conference League winners. Emile Smith-Rowe finishes the year once again as our Golden Boot winner. 13 goals and 10 assists, up to an 85 overall now, which is brilliant. I've got big questions though at the striker role. I know he was out for seven weeks there, but look, man, that is not the production we need from him. I mean, Munez came back and within 15 games, games gets himself nine goals. I don't think he's going to be our starting striker next year either, to be honest, but I think we might need to pull the trigger on getting somebody that can get us 25, 30 goals a year. Going to be saying goodbye though to a couple of players. 
carry a blade, I'm going to be letting his contract expire. But then Raul Jimenez and Tom Candy, the magician, King Candy himself, one of my favorite all-time Fulham players. He is retiring alongside Jimenez. Tom Candy, especially. Thank you for your service, mate. When this day comes in real life, I'm going to be quite upset. Tom Candy retiring from football. I want this third season to be the season where we make a massive jump. David Hanko is the type of signing I'm talking about where I want to make a massive jump. 84 overall defender. He signs on here from Roma. It's a lot of money, I know, but 41 million pounds is spent to make him our rock in the back line. The Canadian Luke De Fogaroles, I don't know. The Canadian though, he goes back to North America, signing with Orlando City in the MLS for two years. And our Albanian defensive midfielder, Adrian Bayazzi, is heading to Sheffield United. But the biggest news of all is that we have sold Trevor Chalaba to Liverpool after a year and a half at the cottage. We've made a tidy little profit there, about 12 million pounds in profit as we sell him on for just shy of 26 mil. Luke Harris, another loan move for him. This might upset some people. It was a tough call for me. I'm such a huge fan of his and I'm glad we've been able to help Pereira have a bit of a career rena renaissance in real life, but we need to move forward. 29 years of age, 80 overall, an extra 17 million pounds could help us sign an absolute world beater at the attacking midfield role. Oli Sanderson, a loan move for him to Spezia. And we've decided to send Rodrigo Munez off on another loan move here. I'm going to give Lukman one final season. This is a crucial year for our Nigerian striker. And again, I don't want Rodrigo putting in a transfer request. We're going to send him to Palace. This is absolutely massive though. I'm feeling really justified in my decision to move on from Pereira because we pick up the Polish attacking midfielder, Sebastian Szymanski. We we get him from Fenerbahce. That means this man knows how to win European trophies. He's gone from winning a conference league to a Europa League in the first two years. Let's see if he can bring that title winning form across to Craven Cottage. The good times keep rolling though, fellas. We're gonna send Valentin Barco back to West Ham for a full season on loan. And we're going to bring Callum O'Hare up from the championship, up from Coventry City as a perfect backup attacking midfield option behind Szymanski. Speaking of attacking mids, I'm also converting the young Joshua King from a center midfielder to an attacking midfielder. God, that was a terrific transfer window, fellas. I am so happy with this team we are building. It is just so much fun doing these rebuilds with your own club. I'm loving making Fulham a footballing juggernaut, but I'm calling us a potential juggernaut. We need to start playing like one. We need European qualification. There's no reason why this team can't push for a Champions League spot, surely. That is exactly what we wanted. We are in the title charge. We are in the top four charge, but it's going to be a tough gig. I mean, look at the look at the, even the teams on screen right now. Only nine points between us in third and Man United in eighth. But even more excitingly, only two points between us and a Premier League title. We need to turn it on in the second half of the season. Keep it moving and at least get Champions League football. If we fall out of the top four, I am going to be pissed. But I'm going to keep the faith with what we have right now and hope that we've done enough this season to get us up to the Champions League and potentially a Premier League title. We hold on, fellas. We end up finishing eight points into the top four. And in season number four, Fulham, we will be playing Champions League football. We were five points off the title, which is frustrating, but that's definitely what I'm striving for next season. Scrolling down the table, Chelsea mid-table again, but it is West Brom, Brighton, and Burnley going down. Aston Villa win the FA Cup 5-2 over Burnley. Unfortunately, we go out in the round of 16 for the second time. Tottenham beat Norwich to win the Carabao Cup. We did not go on a run like last year. We went out to Cambridge United. Are you taking the piss? PSG win the Champions League. Antwerp beat Jal Polinia's Bayern Munich to win the Europa League. And Royal Union St. Galois from Belgium are going to win the Conference League. I want to see though, how did Fenerbahce go? They were going for their... Oh my god, okay, they finished bottom of their group. Fenerbahce were going to win three in a row, but they couldn't do it. Probably because we stole their main man, Szymanski. Speaking of Szymanski, he ends up finishing as our top assister of the season. 23 goal contributions. Adam Mola lukman has given me some stuff to think about. He scored 17, which I mean, again, isn't great, but it's an improvement on the previous years. 
I honestly might go for an upgrade, though. Rodrigo stays at a 78, though, which I'm surprised by. An all right season for him with Crystal Palace. I think we're going to have to go for a starting striker next year. Might have to go for a new right midfielder as well. Gio Reyna not getting a load of game time. And Harry Wilson stepping up in his absence. Going to be saying goodbye to Luca Ashby Hammond, who is going to free agency. And Luciano Dioria, Dioria Henry, who I've been trying to sell since the early days. But he ends up going on a free to Rotherham. Cheers, bud. Bring on season four and bring on the Champions League. I feel like with a few tweaks to the squad, we could definitely be a serious contender next year. We're getting a massive signing across the line. Nice and early here, fellas. We have signed ourselves a world-class striker. He's won just about every trophy on the planet with Manchester City. And I'm hoping he can bring some of that trophy winning success across here to the cottage. He wants to be the number one man. He doesn't want to be stuck behind early. Harland anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, I would love for you to say hello to our new starting striker. It is Julian Alvarez. We picked the Argentine up from City for a club record. 83 and a half million pounds. And for the second time in this video, we're going to sign a left back from Brighton. It is Fran Garcia. I was hoping by now Barco would be kind of ready to take the starting spot, but he's still 79 overall. So, and I, I don't feel confident with Anthony Robinson being 80 overall. So we're going to make a slight upgrade here. Garcia, the Spaniard, welcome to Fulham. I was hoping it was going to turn out different. I was hoping Lookman was going to be the star striker that could help us win a Champions League title, but I'm cutting ties with the Nigerian striker. The second time he leaves Craven Cottage, the first time was at the end of his loan, but now it is permanently. Adamola Lookman. I'm hoping this doesn't bite us in the ass, but he now plays for Arsenal. That has given us a little bit of money here. I'm gonna have to change that number because I don't know if I feel comfortable with somebody besides Leno wearing number one, but it is Dragovsky joining us as a backup goalkeeper here from Panathinaikos. I've caved. I've caved. Man United have come in every year since we're We've got him every window since we've got Valentin Barco trying to sign him. So we're going to let him go to Manchester United on a loan, not permanently on a loan. I'm hoping he gets some growth. If he's getting no game time, though, at the end of the first year he's out there, I will bring his ass back. We prepare for battle in the Champions League with this roster. It is an awesome looking side. Our bench looks awesome as well. So much depth across the park with a lot of guys that have been here since day one. And excitingly, we still have 60 million pounds in our transfer budget. Budget. So if anybody is not living up to expectations, I am prepared to make a big move in January. Our first Champions League group isn't terrible. It's ironic after selling two of our right backs to Napoli that we get to face them, but it's Napoli, Villarreal, Royal Antwerp. I genuinely could see us top in the group. It just depends. I mean, Napoli are really good on FIFA, so we'll see there. But Group G, I expect to get out of it. Group G is ours, baby. We top it. Only one loss. The entire group group stages. It's not surprising to see us and Napoli heading through. It is surprising though to see Villarreal not getting a single win in the group stages. Luckily, this is not a Villarreal rebuild. This is a Fulham rebuild and in the round of 16, we've got Nice. That is not a terrible draw at all. I'm assuming though Tim Ream has probably retired since then. Napoli got Porto, so Group G got a pretty decent draw. We sit ninth in the Premier League though. 30 points, however, we're only three points out of the top four. This is just a super competitive season. 10 points off the title, six points off Man City. We need to sort it out here in the second half of the season and make sure we get ourselves into that top four again. Gio Reyna has submitted a transfer request though, lads. No growth from him this year. He's not been playing too insane either. I mean, Harry Wilson has been getting more game, more goals than him and assists off the bloody bench. All right, I'll listen to it though. I'm open to I'm open to offers for Gio Reyna, which is something I didn't expect to be a situation. Incredibly frustrated that it has come to this, but it is what it is. It's, we're going to be better for it, lads. Gio Reyna heads to Atletico Madrid for 30 Seven mil. Let's do some scouting and get out there and get ourselves a world-class right midfielder. Losing Gio Reyna might have just been a blessing in disguise. It might have been the biggest blessing of the rebuild. We are going to pick up one of the best players from Euro 2024. It is Nico Williams joining us here exactly on his market value. 89 and a half million pounds from Bayer Leverkusen. That is absolutely massive. I'm going to convert him to a right midfielder. Oh, that's a plus five upgrade. I am 
buzzing for that. And it's only gonna take two weeks for him to be converted as well. Cheering. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This team is absolutely insane, and I am a believer. Let's show the world that we can win a Champions League this year. First knockout round game away in France. It is Julian Alvarez. He misses a penalty, but he makes up for it in the 88th minute. We're taking a one goal lead back to Craven Cottage. We need to finish the job though. We need to be putting teams to the sword. On paper, overall wise, our team is unbelievable. But can we step up when it actually counts? 2-1 up against Nice and it is another 2-1 win. Varela with a yellow card. Alvarez and Smith Rowe banging in the goals. We're heading to the quarters. All right, this is going to be a big test of where we're sitting at. I mean, if we win this, we will be one of the best teams remaining. Manchester City, quarterfinals, an all English affair. Oh, I'm, I'm just grateful now that we signed Alvarez. First leg is away at the Etihad. Will Julian Alvarez be able to step up against his former side? I'm really hoping so. Come on, head back to the Craven. Yes, come on! I couldn't even talk. Go back to the Craven Cottage with the lead. That is what we do, goddammit. Julian Alvarez scores. Dybala misses a penalty for City. And Ezri Konsa doubles our advantage. A lot of yellow cards, but we have a two-goal lead. Oh, come on, lads. Do not blow this. 2-0 up, park, V-Bus, park it. Oh my god, oh my god. That would have to be one of the greatest games of all time. 6-6 six, six. on aggregate. Man City win it 6-4, but we win on a penalty shootout. Ninth minute Alvarez in the 12th minute Doku. City take the lead on the tie in the 36th minute. We tie it up, but then Haaland and Foden go bang, bang. Williams scores for us in the 78th minute. We think we've got it wrapped up. Then in the 89th, Rodrigo sends it to extra time. Some Manski gives us the lead in extra time. And then Rodrigo again. Rodrigo. Oh my God. Rodrigo scored in the 89th and 119th minutes for Man City. Uh, but they still, it's not enough for them. We go perfect on our penalties. And we are through to the Champions League semifinals in the most dramatic of circumstances. Oh my God. That is genuinely cooked. And so, all right, I'm still coming down from that result, but we're the last English team remaining and we're gonna be traveling to Germany, to take on Borussia Dortmund. Somehow we've got a full strength starting 11 for this one. No suspensions, but we travel into the Signal Iduna Park, one of the toughest places in world football, and we come away with a two-all draw. It is our substitutes in Callum O'Hare and Harry Wilson getting us out of jail with this one. We need to be better. We need to be better in the return leg. I've tried to give us every possible advantage. I've renewed contracts. I've done press conferences. I've made sure this team is as happy as Larry, but will it be enough to get us into a Champions League final. It is. Come on, Fulham. Come on. Fulham are into a Champions League final. We've built up one of the most insane teams. And here in season four, we have a chance to win it all. Our opponent, AC Milan. It is the red, black, and white derby here. AC Milan versus Fulham in the 2027 Champions League final. Celtic win the Europa League. Lazio, the Conference League. Oh, that is a massive relief. It was an absolute log jam in the Champions League spots in January. Luckily, we've got our act somewhat together. We get in by the skin of our teeth ahead of Man City and Man United, and we are going to be playing Champions League football again in season number five. Down the table, I want a big team. No big team's getting relegated. Man City win the FA Cup over Middlesbrough. We actually lost to Man City. No, we did. We beat. We lost to Ipswich. I thought we... Where did we... I swear we beat... Maybe it was Man United I'm thinking of. One thing I know for certain, though, is that we we have won the Carabao Cup over Man City. We take down City 2-1. We've won our first piece of silverware. And I'm hoping after this, we can make it two very quickly. Emil Smith-Rowe, I am so glad that I've gone ahead and got him. And I'm hoping that Fulham can sign Smith-Rowe in real life and have very similar results. If in four years, 
we're in this alternate reality where Fulham are playing in a Champions League final with Smith Rowe. Just remember this moment. But here we go, fellas. Can I win my favorite club, Fulham, a Champions League title? I feel like every time I verse AC Milan in a Champions League final, it's always at the San Siro. What kind of witchcraft and wizardry are they pulling so they get a home game in a Champions League final? Ridiculous, man. All right, let's defy the odds once again. Oh, man. No shots for him. Leno saw that late. Corner for Milan. They've been tough to dispossess in this one. They go to Benacer, who puts that one in there, headed away, but it's right to Rafael Liao who hits the shot it's blocked again ball in get away nice good ball out wide there Garcia I'm running as far as I can I see you in the middle but I'm getting a soft go again defender dragged in Szymanski Szymanski 1-0 I was in two minds there as to whether to take another touch or try putting across to Julian Alvarez but I've just committed to the shot and it is our Polish attacking midfielder giving us the lead on the break here do not let them get back into this one. wan defending Liao. Ball in. That's a great ball. That's a great header. We are lucky to be in the lead in this one. Milan playing a bit of a press now, though. I need to use that to my advantage. It's a great ball. Williams has got the pace. Williams skins the defender there. I'm going to put this one in. I see the back post. Oh, we can't get there. It's still on, though. Get a good ball in. Oh, feed it. Vareja. Oh, Williams, oh, that's worked out well. Szymanski dragging it back. Still got possession somehow here. Juan Basaka. Ball in. Oh, oh, he hits the post. That would have been an insane goal. Oh, my God. If Alvarez scored that, I would have lost my head. Yes. Defenders, Marquinhos, he's too slow. Smith Rowe's got all the momentum. Sweaty goal. Sweaty goal, Julian Alvarez. We are the kings of the counter attack today, ladies and gentlemen. Varea makes the tackle on the edge of the box. We go up the other end. Smith Rowe is way too fast. And we are 2 0 up. Don't let them get back into this one. Four minutes to go. They put it back post. They win the header. Saved from Leno. Massive. The keeper is up already here. They try to go for Mannion. Williams heads it away. It's still on. Blocked. What a block from Consa. I don't get rid of it, though. I was too busy focusing on the bloody block. Uh, AC Milan are back into it, lads. I'm going to park the bus right now. I'm not going to lie. And it is not enough time for AC Milan. It was a late scare. But we have won a Champions League title with the mighty Fulham FC. I'm nervous about our real-life future. But right now, all I feel is bliss. And what is even more beautiful, Bern Leno is the man with the captain's armband lifting the Champions League trophy to make Fulham FC European champions. What a beautiful sight. Fellas, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.